Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of this van conversion series where we'll be following the progress week by week showing you what we get up to in our van conversions. So to start of week two on the uh, Stanley conversion, uh, we made really good progress last week getting the external features cut in such as the windows, the roof light, the solar panel and the water tanks. This week we're moving inside the van, we're going to be battening out the structure, we're going to be continuing with the first fixed utilities and also uh, lining the walls and ceiling with insulation and plywood. There are many reasons why we like to use roof and battens in our van conversions. One of these is that it is um, a good diameter so that it works well with the insulation board, which is 25 mil. Roof and battens themselves come in long lengths up to 4.8 meters, so can span the whole length of the van. And also the battens are pressure treated, which help to prevent from side effects of rot and damp. Now Stuart's just putting the wall battens in on the uh, conversion. You can see we're using these spacers here, uh, 685 mil, just so that the battens run parallel to the floor. And we've done that on the other side of the van as well. You can see we've got the high level and the low levels in. And you've just seen we've battened around the window, which is how we're going to box it in uh, to create that nice look. Uh, and uh, fit with curtains and, and blinds and things like that. Uh, Otto's working on the closed cell foam on the walls. So you can see this is just the uh, neoprene material with sticky back uh, so that you can just apply it on. And it's also one of the layers on the ceiling as well. Uh, I've continued to run some of the cables um, to the Truma. I've put the flue uh, through the van now. Uh, and then the cable loom down here has the temperature sensor, the, um, the 12 volt power supply, and also the comms cable, which run up along the top of the van and down into this overhead here, which is where we're gonna have all of the controls for the boiler and the LPG solenoid, um, things like that. I'm now gonna show you some of the wiring that I've done uh, for the main lighting circuit. We're gonna have three LED spotlights in the ceiling of the van, one at the back, one at the middle, and one at the front. Uh, and they're going to be controlled by a light switch which will be located uh, just on the wall by the sliding door. Uh, this will be so when you open the sliding door you can switch on the lights before getting into the van. Uh, in terms of the cable runs for this, obviously uh, the cable starts down uh, where the 12 volt fuse board is going to be uh, underneath the bench seat. It then runs up the uh, rear brake light pillar uh, through the 40 mil bit of conduit and along um, this top pillar here to this first uh, light location. So the uh, wiring is going to be a parallel uh, lighting circuit. Um, so the power cable, which runs in this uh, positive cable here, is then going to go uh, to the switch. So it runs along down this cable into this switch here. Uh, so we've got essentially a two core cable. Uh, this is a supply from the battery. And then this, I've put a bit of red sleeving uh, on it to uh, signify that it's a switched positive. So then the positive, once the light switch is turned on, will then go back up that switched positive and to uh, the first light, um, which is here. And then what we've done is we've wired these in parallel so that that switched positive then feeds light number two and light number three. Uh, the advantages of this are that because each of the lights has their separate switched positive, if the first light goes out, uh, for whatever reason, uh, lights two and three will still work. Once I'm happy all of the electrical connections are sound, I use this fabric tape just to tape over where the uh, crimps were, just so that it regains that double uh, bit of insulation and keeps it all nice and tidy. So I've just run another one of the cables uh, underneath the van. Uh, this bit of conduit down here is going to get clipped underneath and then it's a 16 mil cable which will run into the battery at the, at the front of the van. Uh, you can see here is the cable. Uh, it's a, a positive cable and this is going to be connected to the DC-DC charger which is what charges the leisure batteries when you're driving. Um, we run it in 16 mil um, because of the length of the cable is about 6 meters. Um, we don't want to have um, much voltage drop because there's going to be about 30 amps running through that cable. Uh, 16 mils rated to about 110 amps. Uh, we're going to protect this cable with a, an 80 amp uh, thermal breaker 
uh, which is a resettable fuse and that's going to be located in the uh, battery compartment itself. I'll show you how we're going to fit the ring terminals and crimp that to the fuse now. So here we've got the 80 amp uh, resettable fuse with the DC DC charger uh, labelled on it. Uh, the good thing about these resettable fuses is they're ignition protected so there's not going to be any sparks um, when you make connections uh, onto these and also if the fuse does trip um, it's resettable so you don't have to replace blade fuses things like that another thing that i like to use these for is almost to isolate the circuit so in the summer months um, you might want to switch off your dc dc charge completely and run off of solar power and what you can do is just press this button and then it will cut all of the uh, 12 volt supply to your dc dc charger uh, so in the summer months you can um, go purely off solar and then in the winter months when you need to use the vehicle alternator you can uh, flip this back on and then the dc dc charger becomes active so to wire up the fuse breaker we're going to strip the insulation off of the 16 mil cable i like to twist the uh, cores to make a solid core um, once we've um, done this we can put on a ring uh, terminal and a bit of heat shrink uh, we're going to make a couple of decent crimps using our crimping tool and then we just place the heat shrink over the end so that any exposed copper is protected by insulation. So I'm underneath the van and you can see the 20mm uh, conduit here and this has got the 16mm and the D plus signal cable in which runs into the bottom of the battery tray which is here underneath the van and you can see it goes up into the battery where this is the vent pipe coming out the bottom of the tray and then the conduit just goes up next to, next to that and supplies the fuse before going onto the battery. I've followed the path of the wiring loom um, which is obviously a proven route and that goes all the way down the near side of the van and it passes into the van through uh, one of these existing grommets here um, and we fixed it where there isn't a wiring loom we fixed it using this all-round band um, with some self-drilling screws uh, just through the uh, hole here and obviously we'll fix this in place and run this into where the DC DC charge is going to be so looking in the battery compartment, I've got the uh, fuse breaker here for the DC-DC. You can see the positive cable here, which is the 16mm flex running uh, down through the bottom of the tray and into the 20mm conduit. Uh, the breaker is currently in the sort of open position, so it's open circuit, um, so voltage won't flow through the cable until I want it to. But once the DC-DC connector is, um, sorry, charger is connected, I'll obviously close that lever which will close the circuit and allow voltage to flow. Otto is just working on the 50mm insulation, which is just shaped to fit inside the voids here. This is the first sort of PIR layer. And once that's all in and taped up, we'll put a second PIR layer, which will sit between the battens, and that'll be 25mm thick. Here's the passenger side wall uh, with the insulation tape fully completed. Uh, you can see uh, the insulation on this wall has the closed cell foam at its very base, then the 50mm um, shaped pieces, and the final layer is the 25mm, and then it's foil taped all together so that it's nice and a uh, barrier. What I'm going to be working on before we put the wall on the passenger side is this pillar here uh, and above the sliding door I need to pack out um, that piece with some structure uh, using plywood and CLS before we then uh, box it in and shape the uh, piece of wood surrounding the sliding door. So to create the V-grooved cladded look in the walls uh, and the door cads we use a trim router bit with a V-groove cutting bit. Uh, this has a depth of about uh, two mil um, but obviously you can run it on a test piece beforehand um, to make sure that you're happy with the depth and then once the groove is routed in we use a sanding block uh, just on its corner 
uh, just to smooth it out to get rid of any of the um, rough roughness uh, within the actual groove itself. So you can see Stuart's just setting up the straight edge now. Um, the cladding uh, grooves we run at sort of 10 centimeter intervals and obviously they just run parallel to one another uh, down the length of the board. Uh, one of the advantages of doing this method is you can have either horizontal or vertical grooves depending on what look you're going for and also plywood is a very stable material because it's sort of man-made um, sheets of plywood with the grain in alternating directions with each layer so the actual movement within the wood is very minimal so you're not going to see any cracks appearing um, between sort of your, your cladding like you might get with uh, tongue and groove. And you can see the plywood has been screwed in and we've used some two part filler just to cover the screw heads. And uh, this groove here is where the two boards join and you can see how we've made it so that where the boards join, it just looks like another groove of the cladding. Uh, we're now gonna sort of sand this all back and prime it um, with white primer. We've also done the same on the ceiling. So you can see we've foil taped all of the bits of plywood strips and then now that's ready for the plywood um, to be cut to shape for the max air fan and the roof lights. I'm just cutting the 6mm plywood for the ceiling uh, baseboard. Um, you can see I've cut the first piece here um, to size. So it's 1m22 wide uh, by 2m long. I've cut it down to 2m long so that where the uh, edge of this board will be, it will sit on one of the 12mm uh, plywood strips so that the other, bat the other bit of plywood, when it butts up against this piece, both bits of plywood can be screwed in at the uh, same bit of structure and the base. But I'll show you that in a bit more detail uh, in a bit. I rough cut the hole for the Max Air Fan, obviously, so 70 mil in is the halfway point. And then I've cut this uh, hole with a jigsaw, just slightly smaller than what the actual aperture is inside the van. So once we lift this up into position, there'll be a small little overhang of about two or three mil and I'll just use the flush trim route a bit um, to bring that level with the inner frame of the Max fan. Um, it's just something we like to do so that everything's nice and flush cut. Uh, we've also put in two hole saws, which will be where the cables come down for the roof lights, the LED lights. So what I'll do now is I'll just uh, paint this with some primer um, and then get the second and third pieces cut and then we can start to lift it up to the um, ceiling of the van. So I've just cut the hole saws for the uh, LED downlighters and you can see um, where the hole saw has there's a small bit of tear away, tear out sorry, uh, on the underside of the of the hole saw. So we just like to use this uh, piece of kit here which is called a slapper um, and we just add this into our drill bit and when you spin it round it basically sands the uh, the radius. So we, we whenever we cut a radius with a hole saw or with a jigsaw, we like to just um, sand it back using one of these slapper tools. We've now installed the ceiling and painted it black. Now you can see uh, the max fan and the skylight holes have been uh, cut out. And then there's also the holes where the spotlights are gonna be. Uh, this black backboard is made of six mil poplar plywood. And then essentially once the overhead cupboards are put into place, we'll run some tongue and groove slats all the way down the length of the van um, to give it a slatted ceiling effect. Here you can see the door cads. Uh, we've obviously just dry fitted them onto the back doors. And you can see the cladded effect that we've made using the V-groove. Um, these screws here, we're gonna put screw caps on just so that the whole panel is then removable if you ever need to get to the like locking mechanisms and things in the future. So this will be completely removable. Uh, these screws here are gonna be covered by some architrave which will go all the way around the window. You can see we've battened the window out and this batten will provide structure for us to put the uh, nine mil plywood, which will box in the window. Um, and then at the bottom, we're gonna have a bit of worktop cut to shape so that it looks like a window sill. So you can see we've got the wall in and the ceiling, and then you've got this piece here, which is like the uh, top corner of the wall. And um, what we like to do is put this at an angle and make some coving for it. Um, I've packed out 
some structure using 18mm uh, plywood and I've doubled it up so that it just sits proud of both the wall and the ceiling. Uh, at the back I've made sure that this is extended uh, to the very back of the um, where the wall's going to go and at the front I've also packed it out so that it goes all the way forward to where I want the coving to stop just so that I've got some structure to fix into at the very front and the very back of the coving and the rest of the pieces are just um, evenly spaced out onto the uh, ribs of the van so they're glued and screwed uh, nice and stable and what I've done is I've just cut a, a rough cut piece of uh, six mil poplar ply and um, I've angled the end grain pieces uh, using the table saw uh, I put this at about 45 degrees uh, on both corners and what you can see is when I put this up against the, the wall it sits uh, nice and flush um, to the ceiling and to the wall itself um, and what we'll do is we'll cut this to length I think if we cut the first piece at 225 centimeters it will be on this bit of structure here and then the second piece will span the front of the van so from this bit of structure over this one and finishing at the front of the van so now the walls are in we're going to get the trim piece around the bulkhead so it will go along the top here which will hide a curtain rail and then down through this pillar here to the floor and there'll be a little LPG alarm down at the bottom there so you can see there's the carpet lining which we've already done so this side here we've made this out of the template that we've got um, but we're just going to scribe it to the wall because the wall thickness is about 30 mil we need to take about 30 mil off of this templated piece because the templated piece is fine for this side fits perfect but because we've now got the wall um, pushing it outwards we've got an overhang down here of about 30 mil so what Stuart's going to do now is cut a block of 30 mil run a pencil line down the wall so that we've got a cut line perfect uh, curve of the wall and then we'll trim this piece down and it should fit really nicely so looking towards the front of the van you can see we've got the coving piece up now um, that runs from the back of the van all the way forward it's at that 45 degree angle and all the way to the front uh, it just stops by the parcel shelf um, and then we've also run a piece we've just dry fitted it along the top and then down the other side as well so here you can see the trim piece nicely scribed in and then we've also added a piece of cladding to the top and you can just see underneath the rings where the track of the curtain is going to sit so that will slide nicely hidden away from view and then yeah in the actual corner we run a bead of Sudaflex just to make that look nice and neat so we're at the end of week two um, good progress so far completed the insulation on the walls and the ceiling finished the plywood walls and we routed those and we managed on this driver's side to get the coving up and that meant that Stuart could start cutting the walls for the shower cubicle which you can see there uh, on the passenger side you can see uh, we've run everything cable wise just need to finish up the insulation up in the corners using the uh, coving method that we've already described and where the sliding door is you can see I've I basically applied some structure out of different sized plywood so that we can in the next week build up the um, walls around the sliding door so that's a little bit complicated so I'll show you that in detail. Next week we'll be installing the shower unit in full and we'll also be starting to look at the carcassing for the kitchen unit and the wardrobe and seats itself so yeah look forward to seeing you then and if you haven't done so already um, check out the first video of this series uh, which you can find the link here